All right, everyone, we're going to get started here. Um, you should be seeing our screen now. And John, if you're ready, take it away. Right. Okay. Uh, am, I, am I audible, Ben? Yes, loud and clear. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, today's facilitators will be myself. I'm John Caesar. Uh, this is uh, my cohort in, in crime, Ben uh, Hartlieb. Uh, we're very excited to uh, take you through some some good thinking that we get out from the field, uh, teachers and um, and folks that are doing this every day. So, um, uh, next slide, Ben, would be great. A couple logistics. Uh, we would love it if you would go ahead and uh, and just uh, like us or, or friend us or on 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 Twitter or Facebook. We're really trying to provide a lot of free resources out to the public. Uh, we we feel like we're uniquely situated. Um, with uh, all of our base of and network of teachers that we've got. And uh, and so we're trying to share that all out to you. Uh, so the more you can share, uh, the broader our reach and the more people that we can help in this kind of disruption to our educational environment. Um, we are going to have questions uh, on the tab on the left side. Uh, feel free to throw your questions in there. Kevin will be moderating that. And... Uh, just also know that we've got some really nice handouts. Uh, we've got a, your quick guide for teaching remotely. We've also got a self-assessment tool that uh, that is going to allow you to kind of look at that and just use it as a guide uh, to look at the systems you have you have in place or inspire some thinking uh, about some new systems you might want to put in place. Uh, next slide, Ben, please. This is the the kind of the gestalt of of what we are uh, working on, uh, and I'm just going to tell you kind of what our our plan is. And the reason we ask you to share this out to your network is uh, based on the input from teachers that are having a really uh, nice seamless change uh, from the school setting to the home setting. We've pulled together uh, about seven key pieces that we feel help you uh, successfully make that transition from school to home, uh, starting from creating your online classroom with Zoom or whatever you use, all the way through monitoring um, our pace uh, of learners, really helping kids to stay on track and stay focused. Um, today's session, of course, is on uh, two pieces. One is establishing learning expectations and then auto group. What we will be doing shortly is we've got a series coming up of, of exemplar teachers that will be sharing what they do as it relates to this uh, teaching remotely plan. And we will be linking to the, this uh, very uh, page here so that you can actually get hands on and see what other teachers are doing to build out these systems. So today's session. I just give you a second to read this. Um, it will, uh, or, excuse me, wrong slide. This is our, our recording, our uh, our series of webinars. Uh, today's auto grouping and establishing learning expectations. You'll see Monday we've got another one on a, a virtual collaboration. Uh, Tuesday one on managing student work. Uh, and then Wednesday is monitoring pace. And then we've got a really special one starting out. Um, we've got a, a teacher that will be putting together, creating your online classroom, who's had tremendous success, just really creating unity and connectedness um, it, you, using an online platform uh, like Zoom. So uh, that's what's coming up. And what's now, next slide, please is our self-reflection tool. Again, this is available in your handouts. Uh, please take this, uh, use it to reflect on and help inspire how you might uh, pull some of these systems in to your online uh, classroom as well. Uh, it's a little blurry here. Uh, I trust that you go ahead and, uh, and access that. And uh, finally, before we get into the actual work, you have got uh, the actual pullout of that of that self-assessment tool for today's session. 
Um, I'll let you read this so you get kind of a, a hook into what we'll be covering today. And, uh, and then we'll go on. So I'm just going to give you 30 seconds to review this. Okay. Thank you, Ben. This is perhaps, uh, I, I have the, the, um, the opportunity to work with uh, the math uh, team at Lindy Unified School District. We've created an academy um, this year, a team teaching academy. Um, that one of the things that stood out to me as we transitioned from school to home was uh, just messaging this idea that school is closed, but learning is still open. Um, today's session on, on really establishing learning expectations is critical. Uh, we started out in, in this uh, disruption with a two week break. Some of us, uh, school will be canceled for two weeks. Um, now in California, we're learning that school is uh, canceled through summer most likely. So uh, the, the message from the district is, is learning is still open. Um, however, uh, uh, getting attendance online is one of our big challenges that we're hearing from the field with teachers. Uh, so however we, um, we create a, an, an academic urgency, um, it's critical right now. It, letting kids know that, hey, we're going to move forward. We are going to finish the school year. We are going to set you up for success so you're not behind next year. This message has got to be pounded home. Um, I think that uh, we're, we're hearing the expectation changing and evolving from our leadership at schools. Uh, as we learn the expectation from our leadership, it's critically and vitally important that we send that expectation directly down to the learners. This is no different than the classroom. We're always trying to create an academic urgency, especially in an environment where we have uh, a, a personalized learning where we allow kids to, to advance upon mastery, um, where, where some kids are allowed to move ahead. Uh, some kids are allowed more time um, when needed uh, to achieve mastery. Maintaining academic urgency and that pressure to achieve is what Dr. Marzano really says is critical to all student achievement. So keep that in mind as we go forward. Uh, academic urgency, pressure to achieve a critical component right now in, in the work we're doing uh, at home. Pacing guide. We're all kind of familiar with this, I hope. Uh, this, is, this is a teacher's tool right here that we're looking at. It is what allows us to take whatever standards or competencies, uh, learning goals, uh, the expectation we have to deliver and, and accomplish in a certain period of time. Most of us are still operating on a semester basis. Um, so we kind of know while from, a, from a teaching standpoint what that expectation is. The challenge is taking that and making that expectation clear to the learner, to the student. Uh, let's, let's move on, Ben. I'm just going to share a couple ideas. Uh, here, here is a method that a kindergarten teacher uses um, to establish uh, maybe expectations for uh, her class. Um, you'll see the little teacher uh, right there up in the upper corner or in the middle here uh, between stage four and stage three. She's, she's in her classroom saying this is where you should be. Um, or she might say this is where you're going to need to be by April 1. But giving kids that, that, that kind of visual so that they know exactly um, the, the, uh, the urgency and the rigor that's involved in their movement is, is very important. How do you take something like this into a virtual setting? Maybe it's as simple as saying, okay, we need to have everybody at step five by March 28th. Now it starts sending a, a very clear, can you go back then please? Yeah, step, excuse me, step four here. We need to have everybody there by March 28th in our online meetings. 
That allows kids to really start feeling, hey, you know, I am already behind. I need to be at step six by, by April 1. That's, that's not too far away. Uh, we need to let kids see that and see uh, in, in a holistic approach where we're all at to create that sense of urgency. And advance, please. Another way we, our teachers in the field are, are uh, applying pressure to achieve is they're just in their morning meetings, they're saying, hey, you know, we need to be on the comedy essay. Uh, yesterday, Ben spoke uh, about their learning plan, their unit plan that will take them through the semester. Once you have that developed, now we can start saying, okay, by April 1, we all need to be at, at the comedy essay if we're going to have a chance of finishing the semester strong. So giving that visual expectation is, is very important, however you choose to do it. Another means is uh, through Empower is it, we've got a, a uh, all of our, our, our playlists developed. We've got our activities developed into a scope and sequence. Uh, once again, um, here, here we can uh, visualize that. Let's get to the Hamlet quiz by if you're not through the Hamlet quiz by uh, April 1, you can expect to be behind. We want to finish this playlist by year's end. Pounding that home daily in a meeting, weekly, um, to, to keep that pressure to achieve in place is going to um, really uh, incite some urgency on the part of, of our learners, our students. You'll see on the left-hand side, um, now we have the ability for kids to monitor their own um, pace based on that expectation. And Power uh, has some automation that, that actually looks at the number of standards within a um, playlist or a course and uh, attempts to um, create some type of pacing um, so that we can have a target growth, as you as see you on see. the left. And on the right-hand side, you see uh, your actual pace. Um, the same thing with the graduation pace. Um, that is a day-to-day -day feedback if we've got big data coming into the system. Of course, if we're not putting data scores in as in real time, this data gets skewed. But a wonderful tool that Ben is going to be going over in detail um, in an upcoming session on monitoring learning. The, um, on the right-hand side is our opportunity to, uh, to uh, really pin um, and get very explicit about what the learning expectation is. Uh, if, if you would go back, please, Ben, to uh, the, the prior slide. All right. There's where you start seeing some pins. A teacher can certainly go in pin and give a, an individual learner explicit what their expectation is and tell them exactly when that is due. Or they can put a due date for everybody. Uh, great tools. Ben's going to go over how to find out the knowledge, uh, look into the knowledge base to see how to do all this. We're just trying to show you right now some functionality that exists for you to start uh, being inspired uh, to, to create pressure to achieve. All right, Ben. Finally, coming back uh, here uh, into what we've, we've worked on, we've, uh, we've created a sense of urgency. We've communicated clearly with the expectation to kids. Um, we're, we're looking at our pacing guides that we have, and we're making them transparent so kids, too, can understand what, what is expected of them and uh, uh, what, how we will finish out the school year. This takes us into a nice segue here. Uh, for ben, uh, once we've established our, our expectations with our learners, we've created that sense of urgency. Now, because we're in a company-based system, we have the ability um, you still at home meet kids at their point of need. Um, also allows for uh, some nice workshop uh, uh, sessions to take and work with smaller groups uh, in Zoom or, or elsewhere to really give point targeted instruction, uh, you know. And so you're uniquely, if you have Empower, you're uniquely set up 
continue very, very uh, uh, quality instruction at home uh, at point of need at the zone of proximal development. And Ben, I'm going to turn it over to you. Sure. Thanks, John. Um, so as John's describing, what's really neat about this and the and the process that we're going through in these webinars, if you joined us yesterday, we talked about building these playlists out and some strategies to make them sequential, to make them uh, loaded with your, your videos and even your, your video lectures and the resources so that students might have the opportunity to be self-directed, might have the opportunity to work at their own pace. What happens when you do that and when you're... Um, accurate with your grading practices, those things come together in a, and make this really simple. What you're seeing is our playlist that we looked at yesterday, but you, I've indicated those, uh, those numbers in the corners. Those represent how many learners are actually actively working on this thing. So Empower knows uh, the content that's being taught, say in meter and rhyme. It knows if a student has already mastered that content and or it knows if the student has already completed that activity. And so Empower can group these learners in what John called their zone of proximal development in their next need. So literally, uh, I come to my playlist, maybe in the morning, maybe in my morning meetings, and I've got a switch up here, show groupings. By flipping that switch, you see what Empower does is it filters out everything that no one is working on. And it shows me just the places that need my attention today, the places where my learners will be working today. So remember back to that frog chart. That was a very similar um, uh, tool. It was doing the same thing. It's taking kids, showing us where they're at, um, and helping us to group those learners by their need. Um, from here, we could drill in. We could click those numbers. You can always drill in deeper in Empower. Uh, you click it, and it'll show you who are those learners. and uh, as John indicated, we may want to connect with them throughout the day. That might be how we structure our day on smaller group Zoom chats or Google Hangouts. Um, some of you may have already experienced, I've seen it in my house already, um, a group chat with, with 25, 30 third graders. Uh, it's, it's a little unruly. It's a little hard to gather the attention. It was some, t some tours of rooms, which was super fun, um, but also a lot of that one kid talking. Uh, and so this... While we think, well, this is really hard, I just want to throw differentiation out the window because we're already in kind of a pickle. If this is done well, uh, this is a really a lighter lift probably than that sort of meeting. Um, I could meet with a couple of small groups. I could uh, really address these specific needs and make that learning super valuable for them um, and be able to engage them in new creative ways uh, based on current situation. Uh, Finally, I, I just want to show you this and one more thing. What, what I wanted to call out here was throughout this presentation today, we've looked at some ways that Empower can help us um, group learners uh, develop the sense of urgency, et cetera. And I just wanted to equip you with, with uh, I don't know, I don't want to say the nuclear option, but put a lever in your hand so that you have really tight control. If, if those groupings aren't exactly what you think they should be, um, and you, and you really wanna push the attention to somewhere specific, I wanna show you two ways to do that. Let's look at the orange one here, highlighted in orange. Um, if you click on this little guy in the corner, you're gonna get an opportunity to pin an activity. And what that does is you get a little red pin. And then here, as we saw on the student side, they have a next up section, which Empower will intelligently populate as I've described. But if I pin it, that activity is gonna go straight to the front. So that's one way that we could say, hey, everybody, I need your attention. This is the assignment today. Boom, there you go. And you know that when learners log in, they're going to trip on that assignment. Another way to do this is with a quick access ID. You'll see in your playlist, your activities, your quizzes, they all get this unique identifying code. And the purpose for that is you could say today's, you know, for this group, I want you all to work on today's worksheet. It's 36133. The learners top and center of their page have a little uh, place to enter such a code. And when they push go, they get warped right to that activity. So nobody's got to search through playlists or have any confusion about what the day's duties are. So in that sense, you really have um, your, your fingers right on the controls. Uh, before we wrap up, um, I'm gonna pitch back to John to take us home. I just wanted to emphasize again, the help button. Uh, we've seen some stuff here. We didn't really get into like a tutorial of this. We're just trying to inspire, uh, share 
the best practices uh, and gather best practices, you've got this help button. It looks like this, which is a little smaller, big question mark. Every user has it in Empower. And if you click there, you have access to our entire knowledge base. Videos like this, much more detailed tutorials. Um, sometimes they, there are articles and, and lectures and lots of information there. Everything that we have and know and use is there. It's searchable. So if you want to know more about auto grouping, go there and start typing that in. Um, and you'll find some great resources there. And so I want to direct you there. I also want to just take one last moment and say that we are eager to hear from you. Um, like I said, we're sharing best practices. We're also gathering best practices. Uh, John alluded to an interview that uh, with, a, with a great teacher who's had some great success. Uh, maybe you've had some great wins. Share those with us. Reach out to us. We're going to give you some contact info in a moment. Most of you know how to get a hold of us. Share those with us. We'd love to uh, continue to build this knowledge base as a community of uh, all of us supporting each other, doing what's best for learners. And if there are um, things that you need, especially in this transition time that you're not finding there, we're eager to get those out. So inform us what your needs are, what the needs of your teachers, your communities, your students are, and we are going to do our very best to um, get a quick turnaround for you and uh, support you as you transition to this remote learning environment. All right, John, back to you. Great. Uh, yeah, great point, Ben. Um, please, if you have something to offer, share. Uh, you don't have to be an expert, but if you have an exemplar, if you're using Zoom real well, or if you're creating connectedness real well, um, if, if you've got playlists organized that you're, you're proud of, we would love to capture um, some of that and share it with other teachers. Uh, finding inspiration at this time is the hard part. And so we're, we're trying to capture as much inspiration as we can um, to help help others. The, uh, the big message today, uh, folks, is this. Um, we're hearing over and over again that attendance for online learning is, is challenging. Um, getting kids to, to buy in that uh, school is open or that at least learning is open is tough until we establish some pressure to achieve until we establish academic urgency, uh, we will be on chill. And uh, the 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 long term uh, the long term uh, uh, view right now is that we're not going to be back for a while um, in school. So uh, let's get serious now and let's keep the movement going. Um, next next slide, Ben, please. At this point, we uh, we would like to open this up to uh, a parking lot, a feedback loop that we would hope you can also do with your kids in your online learning uh, to ask them, you know, what's going well? Uh, what are some opportunities for improvement that you see that we could help with uh, in our presentations? Um, uh, as far as questions you currently have or great ideas, um, maybe maybe you've got some great ideas. Throw them in the chat, please. Kevin's going to monitor a little Q&A session and uh, and we will hit that right after the next um, and last slide. Of course, if you or your district needs some support resources, uh, you you want to um, you've got something that we could interview and put you on social media and, and into our sessions or whatever. Reach out to Sean Duncan. Um, Sean will uh, you can email him there at Sean at EmpowerLearning.net, um, and he he will he's he's very good at uh, getting back and uh, meeting needs. So uh, please do reach out to him. Kevin, I'm going to turn it over to you for any questions as they arise or, or good ideas or um, ahas. All right. Thank you, guys. Um, we do have a, a few questions here. If you have any additional ones, throw them into the chat, um, and then we can address them there. Um, ben, can you um, talk about if they happen to not see that help button on their site, what they should be doing to get that? Oh, yes. Uh, so the help button recently went through some cosmetic changes, and uh, there is a there is one version of the updates that doesn't have it presently. And so if you have that version, what you need is a version update. Forgive my clicking; I'm trying to get to the help button slide. 
Um, if you don't see it, just let us know. You can email us, uh, you can drop a help desk ticket in, but we can get it to you really quickly. We just need to do a, a software update to your site. It's all ready to go and packed out. So um, hopefully you're seeing that, but if by any chance you're not, let us know and we'll get it to you lickety split. Great, How thanks. about non techies like myself? How does this work? How, how does it work? Yeah. We'll, we'll take care of it. If you, if you just no, let I us mean, know. I mean, there. just accessing knowledge. Say, oh. I'm curious yeah. about uh, monitoring learning, for instance. Yeah, check it out. I'll show you a, a live version here. So I'm just logged into my site. Here's our little question mark button. If I click on this, it just pops up. That's it. And I can browse through articles and videos here, but I can search. Let's say I want to know more about making playlists. You just start typing there, start asking a question. Um, my bandwidth is slow. Should should give us a search result here. Friends lagging. Um, we'll see articles here. Let's see if we can it'll let us pop up one of these. An article like this. Um, and we can read it right here. Sometimes they're videos, sometimes they're graphical. If I want to, I can hit this button and it's gonna take me to uh, a bigger screen version. So if I really wanna dig into this content, table of contents and everything is here, related articles, you can browse our entire hierarchy, FAQs and glossaries, et cetera, Marzana's implementation manual. And uh, importantly, these links you can share. So if you find something here that you want your teachers to get a hold of, just grab this link and feel free to uh, send it out. All Empower users have access to this content. Uh, so feel free to get in here and uh, enjoy and explore. That's the knowledge base that Ben said that we're um, growing. We've been adding a ton of stuff to that. And um, some of the things are, are things that we have seen a need for, but also some have been uh, brought to us, a need that a specific school or a client would have. Um, so again, if you have any needs uh, that we can help address, let us know, and we'll make sure we add it there so everybody can benefit from that. Um, okay, Ben, can you uh, quickly, um, the grouping within a playlist, can you speak to how a student would move from, quote unquote, needing one um, activity to the next? What, what actually triggers that, that grouping in Empower? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I'll pull up another visual here for us to talk our way through. Okay, here we go. So there's there's two triggers for this. First of all, um, empowers what it's trying to do is it's trying to identify what's their zone of proximal development. What's the next thing they need? Assumption is again that you've built this playlist in a sequence that one activity follows the other, builds on the other. So let's say I'm here on Hamlet as a learner. My marker being here uh, means one of two things. Either I need this content next, uh, that is, I haven't yet mastered the skills that this this um, unit, this activity is aligned to, standards that it's aligned to, um, and or I haven't completed the activity. So I'm here working on this. Once I turn in my Hamlet essay, uh, my teacher gives me a grade on it, my little marker moves forward as I get a star there that I've, I've met the requirements of that activity. So my little marker moves forward. So completing an activity will progress me, but also mastering the content will. So it is possible that um, as a learner, I log into this playlist for the very first time, and I could see that um, it's actually recommending that I begin up here on a Midsummer Night's Dream, because I, in a previous experience, have already mastered meter and rhyme. I already know all about pentameter, and it's a repeat for me. So Empower is suggesting I do the next thing that I need. Now, down in your control panel here, the teacher, of course, has the ability to override this, maybe it's a it's a false positive, or you you want them to go through these steps for different reasons. It's your lesson plan, um, and I can cause the learner that to be again pinned or assigned to those learners, even if they've already completed the content. But those are the two triggers: finishing the activity and mastering the content. So, I mean, then the nice thing is when it determines that you finish that Hamlet activity and move to the Hamlet quiz, that Hamlet quiz is then presented automatically in the uh, up next section in the student side of things. That's right. Uh, like which having will be covered, assistant in class with you. Which will be covered, I believe, in the uh, in the student workflow session coming up, right, Ben? Yes, we're going to focus on what the students see and how we can control what they see and guide them more particularly. 
managing their work, including the stuff they turn in, et cetera. Okay, so that that's uh, talking about the automated grouping. A, a question um, that is a little bit more on the manual side of groupings. Um, we know that we can create um, groups within Empower and that they can search for that in that knowledge base. That's pretty simple to find those directions there. But how can a teacher um, see what their needs are and see those groups within a class? In particular, I was thinking maybe the, um, the, the target browser with that student data yeah. overlaid on top of that. Yeah, thank Sometimes you. Sometimes just for for the teacher's planning purposes, I think. That's right. So John, John and I showed a few ways to look at this. There's one more really great way here um, that is kind of a bird's eye view. Again, I want you to think of the frog chart. So the target browser is a visual representation of all of our standards. Each of the tiles here is a standard. And what we can do is we can ask Empower, show me my AP ELA 9 learners and where they're at relative to my ELA content. And Empower overlays their data right on top of it. So in this case, um, this little growth bar, I've got four students who have already mastered this standard, three who haven't. So just like the lily pads and the frogs on the wall chart, I can see where they are. I could drill in and find out who are those four. I'm gonna do a lesson on this and I wanna make sure I'm, I'm addressing it. I get in a group, all of those learners who have this need. So this is a great way if you really want to get that 30,000 foot view of the content, target browser is searchable, filterable. You could look at just the standards that relate to your course, your teaching, just the standards that are supposed to be taught in the third grade and get an idea of where your particular learners are at in any particular sets of content. There, and obviously this is a, a screenshot Ben has pulled up, but you could click in and see all those specific um, individual users. So you can really drill into all that information. That's right. That's right. Do we have Great any question. other uh, additional questions that have not been addressed yet? Um, if you happen to put them up in the question tab and I have missed them, um, please let me know. Um, we shifted uh, ownership of this webinar at the last moment. So I, I assume that my uh, rights to view, view all those questions would be there, but just in case something has slipped through the cracks, uh, you can throw it in the chat, the chat box there. Ben, John, anything else uh, that you want to share before we wrap up here? No, not for me, just to reiterate um, that we are eager to uh, be helpful. We're eager to hear from teachers that are having great successes and teachers that are struggling um, and help uh, bring us all together to make the best of it. Yeah. Good, ben, now, maybe uh, let, can we share real quick uh, the upcoming uh, webinars? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that, let's, let's take a look at that. Uh, right. And that will be it. So And while he's pulling those up, I want to reiterate um, this is a time of great learning for all of us as we make this transition a lot quicker than we ever imagined we'd have to. Um, so remind your staff, from um, everybody from your administrators, um, all the way down to your classroom teachers and paraprofessionals that um, they don't need to expect perfection, even if they've been teaching for 20 or 30 years. Um, they just need to expect that they're going to give it their best effort and continuously improve as um, leaders and as as teachers um, because this is trying times for everybody and uh, as long as they get better every day that's all that we can expect from all of them okay three of the, the really critical things with with your uh, your school classroom and at home um, is inspiring collaboration really hard at uh, at home uh, the, the kids don't have access to our teachers um, all the time like they do in the classroom. So uh, we have tools within Empower through activities that kind of group kids in, in their little walls. Maybe there's five kids on a group. They can help each other. They can get questions answered. They can say, hey, let's get on a Zoom. Teaching that virtual collaboration, we're going to be giving tips how to build that into your, uh, your remote learning classroom. Uh, the other is managing student work. 
challenges for those who don't have good playlists built or good workflows for turning in work, getting feedback on them and getting them scored efficiently. Uh, really excited to share if you're not using the workflow tool, tools within Empower, super powerful stuff. Kids can click, you receive, you can give feedback right then and there, you can score it is real time, which allows us to go to the last session and have real time progress monitoring. When we have real time data, we have the ability to have real time progress monitoring. And, and in other words, kids have the ability to, to say, uh, where am I? Uh, where am I going? How am I going to get there? And am I doing well now? Um, it, Am I uh, up to the expectation that the teacher has set for me? So uh, those are upcoming. Uh, lastly, not uh, it hasn't been determined yet. The date. It'll be shortly thereafter, but we will have a guest teacher coming on board to share their remote classroom, uh, how they do morning meetings, how they set up workshops to support small groups. Uh, all that good stuff coming uh, shortly uh, after April 1. And uh, thank you for attending today. Uh, blessings, everybody. Be safe. And uh, any questions, give Sean a call. Thank you, guys. And remember, you have a few handouts that are available to you. Um, I believe you should also get an email after this is closed with those a link to those handouts as well. Um, we will make a uh, version of this webinar, the video, available online, and we'll make sure that you get sent that as soon as possible as well. As well. Thank you, everybody. Bye, everyone.